Thank you for joining the facilities committee meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is further discussion of the revised feasibility study to remove the portable classrooms and update the libraries at the elementary schools. Dr. Adler. So would you mind just turning off that we fan? If you can, just, that helps a wee, that, that helps a wee bit. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone, and for those who are up bright and early, uh, thank you again uh, for the budget last night. And I'm excited this morning to talk about another opportunity to move the district forward. I can, genuinely have excitement uh, this morning because I'm hoping that um, this will be a, <clears throat> another step in the direction of completing uh, some of the, the needed work in the district. Uh, so since the last time we were together, the administrative team, um, uh, Mr. Lynch and Mr. Rudel are here this morning. I want to thank them and recognize them for their efforts. Uh, John Scheib is an architect from Northeast Collaborative here with us again and has been instrumental in helping us along. So since the last time uh, we looked at administratively, at least the charge that I, I took away from the last meeting was, uh, as a superintendent, what is it you need in this district, uh, particularly as we, as we talk to the elementary schools? What are the needs in that capacity that uh, I would identify for the community um, and for uh, the individual school communities of those particular uh, school buildings? So it was with that that we took a, a fresh look at it. We listened to what members of this committee said, what members of, uh, of the, uh, the Board of Education, what they said. And so I'll, with that, I'll give a, a few summary steps that we took and a few uh, decisions along the way and a few lenses uh, that apply to the work that is before you today. So essentially, as you know, we were looking at um, we were we were looking at the li the libraries and we were looking at uh, getting rid of the portables. As part of my entry plan, the it was very clear that the portables were a necessity, both from an aesthetic point of view, but more importantly, even a, a, an instructional and primarily a safety uh, perspective. So that 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 was first and foremost. The libraries reimagined, as you know, was, was built into that discussion as to what to do with the library. So a few things that uh, uh, we did, we actually looked at some educational specs and drafted some that would apply across the district somewhat. Um, and that was that helped guide the decision. So fundamentally, we looked at uh, the elementary schools and here's a, couple, here's a couple of decisions that we made just to frame the discussion. We looked at gymnasiums and we eliminated all the gymnasium discussion out of the elementary schools. We set aside for now Tokenique library. library. Uh, that library can be, can be managed and can be addressed and the learning zones that we want in there, we, we can apply to, to uh, Tokenique. We just took that offline for now because uh, we, we, we should be able to address that. The main priority that uh, identified with administration and including the principals was instructional needs of the school. And primarily that, that includes, for the most part, it includes the bands, uh, instrumental, the libraries, primarily because they are outside and have to come in. Uh, so they have to be redesigned. And then the instructional spaces in the, uh, in the classrooms. So it's with that lens that we looked at what would the redesign look like if we included the libraries, uh, get rid of the portables, um, in the buildings where we had to make the classrooms the size they need to be. Because there are some classrooms, I think you, you know just from your own experience, there are some classrooms that absolutely limit the type of instructional practices that we're trying to promote. As opposed to equity in the exact size of classrooms, I would really like equity in the instructional practices that we're having for the children. And th there really are limited uh, in some of these schools. So it's with that lens that... Um, we revisited this. And so you'll see plans here for Hinley, Holmes, and Royal. I've left out completely the middle school library reimagined and the high school library reimagined. I'm going to set those aside. I do think that uh, we can do some organizational things in there from a budgetary point of view moving forward, a capital moving forward. Um, and even working with members of the community uh, organizations moving forward. So uh, I really focused on what are the main priorities? It's Henley, Holmes, and Royal. Uh, we decided to put them in that particular order only because uh, the, certainly a board or, or a 
building committee can can reassess that and decide other way but for, for now we put it before you so that we didn't have multiple big projects going on simultaneously henley was put in place primarily first because well the portable there's the more portables there they're older portables there they're in the worst condition and they're furthest away from the building so it's with that um i'm excited to bring uh this week proposal before you um, uh, john can sort of lead us through uh his renditions here but those are the big decisions that uh, administratively we made to, to, to refine this and bring it forward. You'll see that some of the numbers have gone up, but that's because we cross-referenced the whole capital plan that we have and realigned things to when things would be done. So uh, I don't know if any of my colleagues have any framing other comments. Okay, uh, with that, John, I'll turn it over to you this morning. Um, thank you again for all your work thus far with us because it's, it's entailed a lot of meetings since last we met. And uh, I'll turn it over if it's okay, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, John, can you just take us take us through, uh, sort of frame some of the things? But if you want to sort of speak to some things that, as you find and what, what what we have before is the board has the big renditions uh, of the floor plans in front of them. Okay, excellent. Thank thank you, Dr. Adley. Uh, um, yes, I, I we have had some some very good discussions over the past couple weeks, months since we last met and. Uh, I, I think bringing this to fruition is a, is is very important, and uh, making the projects as as encompassing as they need to be is is very important. And I think we'll um, recognize some some efficiencies of scale, efficiencies of scope, and and deliver projects for each of these three schools that will uh, will be a comprehensive improvement. I'd like to share my screen if I can. Um, and I will um, okay, so uh, yes, I see that the all right, excellent. Uh, so with that then the the study that we did, this is an update to the study. Effectively, uh, Alan has already described the parameters, so I won't I won't get into too many details on the parameters, but effectively, Portable removals remains the top priority. Enhancement of the libraries remains the, the, the continued priority from prior study, but it expands into um, incorporating developing draft educational specifications. So I think that's that's key because you, you're, you, you have a recent Tokenique Elementary School, you have a, a brand new Oxridge Elementary School being built. Um, those were all built around educational specifications. And in order to just make sure that we have a, 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 a somewhat even level across the district, it's, it's important to have those educational specifications. And it gives us something to design to in terms of size, quantities, arrangement of spaces. So, so that's all in, in the works. Um, we're doing it in parallel. Uh, and I think that's important in, in an existing building. It's with a new building, it's very important to create your edu educational specifications, complete them, approve them, and then design. With an existing building, uh, studies like these that look at the facility and look at the opportunities that the facility has uh, are really important to do in lockstep with educational specifications. And for the most part, we're finding that we're, we're trading information, we're putting some uh, list of spaces and sizes back and forth just to make sure that, that that things are, are developing accordingly. Um, the other important step here that Alan mentioned was the, in, the, the um, incorporating the infrastructure, uh, long range capital improvements at each three schools. So those include items like um, major mechanical upgrades, HVAC, boilers, um, piping, distribution. So, so the things that are already included in the five year uh, long range capital improvements plan the idea is get those included into this project, make them seamless with additions. So if we're doing a boiler replacement, we know the boiler replacement's gonna need to accommodate an extra 3,500, 7,500 square feet. So, so it's, really, it's really good. And, and again, I mentioned economies of scale and economies of scope. This is where we get into that and, and we can be more efficient and effective in, in framing an overall project. It also includes some um, 
you know, electrical improvements, electrical upgrades, um, technology and technology systems that include some bathroom work. Um, so, so those are all in, involved. There are some exterior improvements dealing with windows, brick masonry, um, and then some various site work. And we'll, we'll touch on the site work when we get into each school a little bit. But, but overall, um, it, it involves the five-year master plan, but it includes some remaining items from the 2016 KG and D master plan report. We realized in looking at this that most items from that master plan report have, some have been done already, some are actively happening right now, and some are part of this five-year capital improvements plan. So taking all that together, there were a couple of things from the KG and D master plan report that do remain outstanding that we're looking to, that are still a priority that we still wanna put into these um, projects. And then um, another round of review with the elementary school principals. And that's what we've been doing over the past week or so and incorporating some of that finding. So that helps inform the layout of the plan. Um, the, so, so overall, I'll move now to, um, you know, oh, oh, we, basically, we, we basically performed the tasks uh, of the study, uh, looking at space planning options for the portables and the learning commons. That, that we've done already, but I think it's important now that we're going back and looking at it. So with those multiple options that were originally prepared, what Alan mentioned was that the option that looked at building a new gymnasium at Hindley and Royal uh, is, is no longer part of the plan. This way um, we keep to focused on the replacement of the portables and providing new music and band rooms, providing renovated idea, world language and, and other support spaces. And uh, for the most part at, at uh, again, at Hindley and Royal, uh, a new library media center as well. So we further develop those plans um, in, in association with the draft ed specs, in association with the master plan study, we've been focused on the, the enrollment projections uh, that were provided by Malona McBroom, the, the update provided in 2020. That's critical because the, the, um, the, the updates provide us with a better handle on where these projects are going, potentially which ones need to be phased as to when, to, are there critical needs in certain years? And, and that's, a, that's, a, that's going to be continuing through this if we do choose to phase these projects. Um, enrollment projection updates are gonna be critical because of the nature that, that um, we don't wanna get caught a couple of years out with, with projects that don't meet the needs of the, of the projected enrollments. Um, so, so covering the, the EdSpec programs, um, looking at benefits and drawbacks. Um, so the methodology is just an overview of what we've discussed here in, in terms of preparing these documents. So the comprehensive needs, again, eliminate the portables, newer significant renovations to library spaces, adequate classroom count and size, especially at, at grades three and five, as you'll see where, as the study had revealed, there were some in, inadequacies. Infrastructure capital improvements, um, the scope of the prior study, um, so, so the addition of this, the capital improvements, you'll see is one of the major cost factors. Um, we, we, actually, we, we actually, from the earlier studies you saw, um, the, I think at one point in time when we were talking about the new gymnasiums, uh, those were a little more expensive for the new additions. So the new addition costs have come back down to where they were when we were talking just about music rooms. Um, so, so there was some reduction on new additions. There's some expansion and renovations and, and certain renovations tied to program. And then there were some increases uh, that the, at the addition of this is the items that pertain to the, the capital improvements master plan, which, which are planned to be spent anyways, but we're just rolling them into this project as well as the remaining items on the KG and D report and some site work improvements. So with that, the classroom counts, targeted classroom counts based on recent enrollment studies, based on size, um, the, the um, projected class size uh, information put forth by the district. We're, we're planning for 24 classrooms at Hindley, 24 at Holmes and 22 at Royal. That parallels the, the, overall, um, the overall enrollments for each school. 
Uh, we're looking at one thing to keep in mind here is how long are each of these projects going to take? And we'll start talking about that. I'll come back to that maybe after the, the overview of the plans. Um, so with, with Hindley, and I'll, and I'll walk, I'll, I'll go through the plans as, as we talk about this and then come back to the, the costs. Um, but, but basically, the Hindley plan, and, and I know it's, it's a little bit small, but, but I, will, um, I will increase my screen. Hopefully that makes things a little larger for everybody. Um, okay. Uh, so you'll see in, in some gray boxes with dashed lines where the current portables are. So those portables all, all are removed. And then we do have a dashed line around the library and media center where that, where that gets demolished. The new addition is the areas with music room, instrumental music, instrumental music, storage, um, me, library, media center, learning commons. And, and in, at Hindley, we rebuild the stair because the stair is on the uh, north side of, that, of, the, um, of the classroom wing, the two-story classroom wing that was added to the south side. We, we are proposing that the stair be relocated to the south side of that addition as opposed to the former location. So. That's, that's the, the, the addition does include two classrooms on the upper level. So the, the second floor plan uh, shows two classrooms being added um, generally over the, um, uh, the instructional area of the library media center and over some of the main, um, the, the green screen area and the um, um, one of the, the, the office workroom area. So, so what that does for us then is it allows to get uh, higher height over the main reading slash presentation area of the library media center. And it allows for a higher height in the music and band room. So that's a nice um, feature as far as how the, uh, how the, um, the, the massing of the new addition would, would be here. Most of the hard work now moves into the renovations of, of Hindley Elementary School. Uh, there are sections where we're looking at demolishing some, some areas. When, when we remove, for example, demoing the library, there's a connector corridor that connects out to the library. That would be uh, renovated and added to classroom space. Um, the former area that's used for the green screen and storage uh, in the current library, that could become a new uh, office, perhaps psychologist. The, um, the larger classroom would remain, and then there's some um, revision to classrooms on the first floor. The in in the more recent addition to the south side of Hindley, there uh, the DLP program relocates to Ox Ridge, so that allows us two additional classrooms here. So, in essence, the um, the the first floor is a relatively straightforward renovation project um, tied in with the demolition and and uh, of the library media center, freeing up some space. Uh, DLP moving, uh, DLC, I'm sorry, DLC moving to uh, Ox Ridge. And then on the second floor, we have, uh, we have additional work and, and some study here on how to reuse the, the second floor of the existing building. And you, you'll see that without getting into too much detail, it follows somewhat of the same logic that where we can um, take down some walls between the corridor walls and the and the perimeter of the building. We, we do so. Uh, we 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 look at freeing up um, the, the 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 classroom in the northeast corner of the second floor. That is two two very small rooms. Uh, it was previously a large room. We restore that to being a large room. Um, one thing we do on the south side in the in the new in the more recent addition uh, is we 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 take down a wall with an office and a current staff work area and we develop, we restore that to a full classroom because it's, it's the same size as the others that are over here. But those programs, the staff work room and the, and the office relocate into the rest of the second floor. Um, so you'll see that that original second floor has really been repurposed into spaces that allow for um, more, more SRBI, special education, um, the psychologists and speech offices, uh, some uh, the world language classroom. So, so taken as a whole, uh, Hindley 
is uh, experiences basically the removal of the portable classrooms at three at over 3000 square feet. Um, that more or less, um, you, you take that off the table, you demolish the library media center, you're looking at an addition that is almost 8000 square feet on the first floor and roughly 2300 square feet on the second floor, giving you a total increase that brings the total square footage to 62,500 roughly. Um, it provides the 24 general classrooms. It keeps um, a dedicated world language classroom. It keeps a dedicated art classroom. It keeps dedicated music spaces. It, it does have this bonus. We, we keep saying it's kind of the bonus room that, um, that we, we've designed the instructional area of, of the library and media center to have a door to the corridor and uh, a way to separate the space off um, should there ever be a need uh, an emergency need for, for another classroom. So in total, I think the, the plan for Hindley um, works, works fairly straightforward. Uh, the, the addition is fairly straightforward in terms of uh, constructing in that area, whatever paved play area you lose with the new addition, you'll regain with the uh, removal of the portables. So it's the, it, the fields are almost, um, fields are virtually unimpacted by this uh, addition plan. Um, so back to the summary sheet for Hindley, and I'll go one by one like this. Uh, so achieved the, the, uh, the design concept incorporates all the things that we discussed. Um, the, a little bit more about the infrastructure uh, and renovations um, at, at Hindley. This includes air handling equipment and HVAC. Uh, it, it includes the um, uh, replacement of outdated systems from um, the, the, the clocks and communication systems and, and whatnot. So it, it, it allows for uh, all of those um, in, improvements that are either in the district plan or the remaining items of the KG and D master plan. The site improvements to Hindley, I'll just touch on this for a moment. The KG and D master plan showed a um, exit from the it, well, it showed an expansion of the bus loop. That's the key part to this. Expanding the bus loop at, at Henley would, would solve some, some, some significant problems. And, and to do that, the exit, would, uh, the exit of the bus loop would move further north and replace the exit to the um, parking lot. The parking lot would be accessed uh, for student, uh, for, for student drop-off uh, off of Route 1. So that would be um, a study, uh, we say pending further study, because we don't have a, uh, this study did not include a traffic engineering analysis. So we would look to, to, to do that as at, if and when this project um, starts to move forward. So the summary, um, again, about 4,000 square feet of net increase from what you have now, which factors in removal of the portables and the demolition of the existing library. Um, so, so the addition, we're looking at uh, all the costs uh, are, are summarized here. And, and you can see that the infrastructure renovations and improvements, um, the, 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 the five-year master plan has about seven to seven and a half million of proposed costs over the next five years. And then the kg &D report had another about 3 million that we need to factor in. So taking all of that into consideration. And then, um, so these line items are actual construction costs. Um, the the kg &D report did have soft costs added onto it, but I wanna, I wanna just address that for a moment. The, the scope and scale of projects and, and, escal and continued escalation um, leads us to look at, at um, using those now as construction costs and then adding new soft costs on because there'll be, um, the, the, there'll be uh, some of those projects were slated to happen already and they haven't. So we, we need to be prudent about forecasting those, those costs. Um, escalation is factored into these soft costs, um, contingencies, design fees, um, all, all of those are, are, are included. There, there's some, uh, there's factors in um, the, the need for potential um, hazmat investigation, further investigation. Once, once you start tearing into the building systems and whatnot, they're, they're, it's important to, to, to take a look at what, what um, potential, uh, to include some contingency there for, for hazmat as well. So overall, I think um, the, the cost summary outlines each, each of these and each of these line items and, and that brings the total Hindley project 
up to between roughly 25.8 million to about 27.7 million as a, as a range, given all of the line items you, you see there. Um, so, John, can, I, can I interrupt yes, you here? Can absolutely, yeah. Now that we've done homes, our way through one, yeah. I think we'd like to discuss questions on this while it's fresh in our minds. Sure. And so I open up to questions. John? So John, thank you very much. I like the direction this is going. Great work. I mean, I think now it's a lot more focused and prioritized. So I think, you know, based on this first look, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, my first question is kind of my P&Z on, yeah, how, how realistic is it creating that exit loop onto Route 1? Uh, maybe you can describe kind of the area in the site map that you're looking at um, where that might come out. Yeah, so I don't, I don't have uh, the, the diagram we have for the site plan doesn't necessarily have the, um, the, the, the north end of the parking lot shown. Uh, um, but, but uh, I'm sorry, the east end of the parking lot, but, but effectively it would bring the, um, it would, it would bring a drive out onto Route 1. Um, I believe, you know, that there are various reiteration iterations of that and and one of them would be to make it a right right in right out only um that that to me makes the most sense uh, but but i've seen that done in in various schools um to to, to some to, to good to good um to good use so that would be but it but it does need uh, i think that's one area where we would want to bring a, a a site consultant with a with an expertise in traffic into that next round of discussion. We wanted to make sure that we had a budget line item tied to that. Um, that's, that's really the focus here was get, get a budget line item to include some site improvements and, um, and, and we can take it from there. That's so just yeah, this, sorry. Uh, the, the concept drawing that we had from the five-year plan, the, uh, the entry road from Route One would be right across the street from the entrance into the church. It would be almost directly across, be like a key, a, a X in his head. Thanks, Tom. And then, just on the budget standpoint, I just want to make sure I, I heard correctly. So, in essence, tend to you know to include some of these site improvements that were also raised. Ten to twelve million of these expenditures were already in plans. So when I look at this, you're looking at about a 15 to $17 million incremental spend to achieve kind of the goals of getting rid of the portables, libraries reimagined, and then some adjustments in classrooms. Is, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Mrs. Parent. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious about the square footage, footage for the classrooms. Did you base it on state minimum? Or are they larger than minimum? Do, what's an average square footage for these classrooms in the, that are newly created? The, so the newly, so, so the, the ones that are created within the, the um, in the footprint of the building, within the footprint of the existing building? Yeah, and both. I'm just curious how, you know, if, are these minimum size or did, you, did we go above and beyond? So they follow the, the, the classroom size and count study that was done last year. Um, so they are, so, so, so they effectively look at the, um, the targeted uh, student class count or the, the it's hard, it's hard to say, are you talking about students or are you talking about square footage? So they are based on the square footages that were that translate to the um, Darien Public Schools classroom student size. In other words, uh, you have a low end, an optimal and a high end. Um, so, so some of these classrooms are at the low end, some are at the optimal, some are at the high end. So it's, it's a it's a it's a balance across those um, across those si uh, across those sizes. So the so basically the the kindergarten rooms at Hindley don't change. Those are about seven hundred and seventy five square feet. Um, they they the 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 first grade classrooms get a little bit larger. Um, so. So that's why and I'll, I'll zoom in. I'll try to zoom in a lot more here because some of them have the. Um, but you can see the 
the kindergarten rooms at Henley, um, 790, 790, 790, 777. Um, first grade uh, gets up to um, you know, 950, 1015, 1098. Those are in a longer, longer arrangement, but but still there's there's a, a, a good number of, of um, the increased square footage there. Um, and then as you go up or up, up in grades, the sizes get smaller. So for example, um, we're in the 800 range in, in these existing classrooms. Um, so, so to effectively answer your question about some of the first grade classrooms on the first floor of, of Hindley, we're, we're looking at an average of about a thousand square feet for those first grade classrooms. Those could always be converted to kindergarten should they, should, should they decide that that's the more optimal use. And then on the upper level, um, we are looking at some of the upper level third grade yeah. classrooms at 862, 853, 754. Um, that 754 could potentially be increased um, with, with some further study on, on program. Thank you. But, but the, um, yeah, okay. No, this is excellent work. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Right. I guess I should have said right at the start, this is predicated on we don't need to build new buildings. I mean, so that's just, I guess we're sort of stating, we're sort of stating the obvious like in the future. So, but I'm just saying, I'm, well, I'll say it once and then. <laughs> Mr. Brown. I'll restate what you said then. <laughs> Um, just one more specific to Hindley. Um, if we lose the old library, um, was that the original entrance? And I, the only reason is I'm just looking for that loop. If that was an old bus, if I could possibly go back, or that would make sense. I just don't know if we would lose that optionality or if that makes any sense in thinking this through. It is the bus, isn't it? Oh, there you go. Okay. Good. So it might be a Perfect. Okay, great. They wanted to. Thanks. They wanted to extend to have more queuing capacity. Perfect. Thank you. We'll lose that. I don't know what the drop off is. So thank you. Um, the other question I had was we, we spoke before we talked about modularity and the idea that if we wound up having to bolt on something to the spaces we're doing now. Um, I'm hoping with the plans we have here, if for some reason a gym or an art room or something, we decide to add capacity, these would have that thought in mind or we're not boxing ourselves in when this was considered? So I, I, the, the one good thing here, I think we're, when we looked at the enrollment, uh, we, felt, we felt good about getting all the four sections and, and each of the hours except for uh, Royal, but, but even Royal is budgeted at this point um, to, I had a good 10 years outlook. Um, okay. So if we feel good about, we ended up make, making that decision at the end to make that additional, I'll call it an additional classroom, but it's an adequate classroom for the, for the enrollment that we're expecting. I, I feel comfortable about that. And then the, the other question, which maybe is not really specific, I want to do it now or later, but um, there was a thought of maybe staging these. And the only reason I would ask about that in, in terms of capacity or Mr. Lynch's capacity or we have any advantages in scope or um, I, I would think right now it seems like uni debt's pretty much free. So I, I defer to the Board of Finance, but I just didn't know if it made sense to try and do these at a more rapid pace if we have the capability or if we're staging because we're just up against the limit in what we can do. Well, Mike can talk to this. Uh, from my perspective, we, I wanted to put something, a ministry on the table that, that, that phases it in. Uh, like I'm just gone home to get these things started. So whatever makes sense from a board of education point of view, working with the board of finance, working with uh, building committees and so on. Like if you want to talk about it, it's fine. I'm John, despite the phasing, but um, you can see the way we've sort of articulated it. If it plays out in a different manner, then that's great. I just want to get started. <laughs> well, we were looking at it from the point of view of uh, 
You, know, you, you want every elementary school uh, torn apart at the same time. Um, I, I know the district did that in 1996. And um, at that time, they, they did very little work in the original building. So, and they put portables out. So it didn't really impact <laughs> the school day. This type of work will. Um, but, you know, when it gets to the town and, and they set up a building committee, they may decide one committee for the whole project. And then working with the construction manager, they may say, you know, we can, we can do this in one shot. Um, but that would be their call. And, and I mean, there's, there's certain economies of, you know, length of time you have a professional architect, a construction worker in your employ. So, you know, they're going to weigh all that. We, we looked at it from the point of view of there's a lot of classroom disruption in, in existing spaces. And, and it might be better if we kind of spread the misery out over some time instead of having everybody mad. It, you know, it's noisy and dusty. That was pretty much. Yeah, I, I guess what motivated that is I know we have uh, a long pent up demand to get rid of portables. So anything we could do to expedite would certainly be interesting. But if, the building committee did decide they wanted to do all three at once. Is that too much for you? Is that no? Yeah. No, we're right. fine. That's what I want. <laughs> I think know. Dave, it's it's a great question, and what we talked through as we were developing this too is, you know, when it comes to the building committee, it, it the nice thing about it is the spaces are pretty much the same for each building, maybe in different areas. So I think there's some efficiencies with the architect, with design, with construction. And I think that's all stuff that'll be kind of ironed out as we go through the process. No, I mean, and I think it's a good, it's a good point. If, if the capacity is there, we can handle it always sooner than better. But right. um, I think there's some efficiencies. The fact that they're, they could look like three different projects. Each school is having similar type stuff done. So we might get some economies of scale there. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it was well thought out. I just wanted to know if there was that interest, whether we have the capacity. So I'm happy to know that we do. That's a great idea, Mr. Barnett. I concur. <laughs> Let's do it as fast as we can to get this done. Sarah's got a shovel ready. I'm ready. I will dig tomorrow. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Lynch, you brought up the point of, of renovations in the existing classrooms. Um, how how much disruption would that cause? Is that something that can be done in a summer, or is this going to spill into the school year? Because I mean, we're talking at least at Henley in, in the middle of the school. Well, most of that work would be done in the summer, but you might, based on the school population in a given year, you might be able to create some swing space where you can section off a section hallway and take some partitions down and renovate two or three classrooms and then, you know, maybe move classes into that and go to another space. Uh, you know, that, that's really dependent on the student population. In the building, if you have that ability to have swing space, or if you have the swing space because you don't have to demolish the portables to do the work you want to do, which really, uh, the way these plans are laid out, uh, you have to demolish the portables at Royal and, and Homes to do the work there. Uh, and you have to demolish it, at least one of the portables at Henley. So, you know, you're kind of limited that way. To, to do in your classroom work over break periods. So Dennis, the good news is we went through this exercise at Ox Ridge where part of the school would be demoed and uh, Dr. Farshaw, Dr. Adley, Mr. Lynch all did a great job of kind of repurposing space there. We changed directions and did a different phasing project, but um, the district did an incredible job of if we take this part of the building down, how do we utilize the rest of the building to keep a school going? So they've kind of been through that exercise, which is okay. good. All right. Other question? Okay, John, next. Yeah, I'll just touch on two things that I heard, if I can. The, um, I, think, I think the idea of removing the, um, the library at, at Hindley is, is a wonderful opportunity to restore at least the aesthetic uh, look of the um, along the the, uh, the west side of the building and and at, at least from a from a visual standpoint even if it's not restored or as, as the as the as the entrance um, you know we can look at that as an opportunity but if programmatically and functionality the bus drop 
works better once you extend it further north, it moves closer to the actual main entrance of the building. So maybe that solves the problem by itself. But, but I just wanna say that as architects, we're delighted by the opportunity to restore the look of the, of the old uh, west side of, of the building. Um, and then the other question in terms of, of phasing, and maybe we can come back to it, um, that we, we, we did try to, in, in discussions, uh, come up with a plan here that um, when, when we're saying construction, approximately two years. So, so that would, the, the, the key part is, is encompassing two summers, but, but encompassing two summers where you have your greatest urgency is coming out of August of the second summer with a complete project. Obviously that's the key, but, but, but being ready each August within those two years to, to begin the, the school year. So what that means is a significant amount of renovations can happen over each summer as, and as long as everything is ready the first summer. So as long as all the materials are, you know, there, there's procurement of materials has happened, temporary work has happened, temporary provisions, some demo or abatement has happened in advance. All of those can, can make a summer renovation extremely efficient and, um, and, and feasible. So that's why when we're talking about the classrooms, it will most likely be part of the summer work. It will most likely be the second summer, but that's not necessarily the case everywhere. Um, it might, because of the phasing, it might make sense, or because of student, student numbers, it might make sense to do certain parts of the renovation first. Um, that first summer and then do remaining sections the, the following summer. And then bookended with all of that is new construction. Um, book, the new construction starts presumably in the, in the spring or summer of the first year and completes by, by the middle of August of the second year so that those new addition spaces are completely ready for um, student occupancy. Uh, okay, so Holmes, it is next to consider. Homes is a little different, and, and I'll start here that the two portable classrooms would be removed, uh, renovations to the Library Media Center. So, so Homes has a, has a very nice space for Library Media Center, and we'd be looking to re, repurpose and revision that. Uh, we'd be taking out some of the pieces that are in there. I think SRBI is in there in a, in a, in a, in a metal wall uh, enclosure to the, to, the, to the space. So, um, so we'd be looking at that, and then and then there's a a, a bit of a um, moving around of some of the um, ancillary learning spaces at, at homes to make it more efficient. Uh, less about classroom size. Homes, I think, had only one undersized classroom when we did the study. So we've we've repurposed that, and we're able to to continue looking at at how the the, the rooms at homes can be used efficiently. So the design concept is a new two-story addition, general music storage. Um, instrument, instrumental music rooms, uh, world languages, uh, two general classrooms, and SRBI that gets vacated, that gets moved out of the library media center. Um, so the plan for homes, looking at it, I'll move it back down. Uh, new addition at the, um, now this moves north is now to your right. So to the northwest corner of, of homes um, is, is where the proposed new addition is. It has a similar confusion, um, similar arrangement of music, instrumental music, and a, a, a regular classroom on the first floor. And then um, we, we convert certain classroom spaces to um, a, a general classroom near the, the common room. Um, convert a smaller classroom with an IT closet in it already into some a suite for, for um, offices. Uh, repurpose uh, the current, I think it's the current OTPT. One of them is OTPT. We, we move that out into a larger room and we move special ed into rooms that are more appropriately sized per the ed spec. And then um, on the second floor, uh, we move the idea room into one of the smaller second floor rooms. And then we have um, world language uh, general classroom and SRBI on, on the second floor here for, for homes. John, I think, it, I think it's fair to say that the design, the way it currently is configured, sort of loops around a wee bit like that to keep a lot of the black top 
And that, that gives Correct. So, so one of the key factors at, at Holmes was our original, uh, we looked at multiple options for how to construct the addition. Uh, um, some of the op early options for the addition actually um, bisected the, the, the paved area, paved areas. And um, it wasn't necessarily a, as much an issue about losing space. It was more an issue about sight lines and safety and, and access. Um, so so th by, by kind of curling the addition around the, the northwest side, uh, we maximize uh, um, it, it's, it, you know, the current building more or less has a stepping nature to it. Sorry, I, it looks like I may have uh, dropped off there for a minute, but 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 essentially um, there's there, there's a increased opportunities for for safe play areas uh, lines of lines of sight and lines of observation across from play area to play area to fields to paved area and then the existing building had has this stepping nature to it so we're kind of continuing the the stepping nature along the um, uh, along the west side of the building the renovated uh, the renovated uh, library media center. Again, we gained space because we were pulling uh, SRBI out of the, of the media destruction. You're just cutting out a wee bit now. We don't show it. Have one. Can have a door uh, direct off the door. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, the library media center is in the the former SRBI room is is removed. Uh, and then we introduced the instructional space to the um, library media center where you could have access off the corridor. Okay, so back to the summary for homes. Um, the new addition costs are, are um, quite a bit less. Uh, the renovation costs are, are dramatically less than the other two schools. Um, you know, we do include portable removals and then site improvements. Um, so in, in removing the portables at homes, we do, we do need to remove those portables first, uh, or at least one of them first. And um, now, now homes is a school that because of the, 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 this might not need anything more than removing one portable, keeping one of them and, and looking for space within the building for a program for a calendar year or for a school year. So, so homes may not need as, as many um, temporary accommodations as we'll see at Royal or, or at Hindley. Hindley would be the same situation. We're, we're only looking at imp impacting one portable. Um, so again, there's a chance that phasing wise, we could find provisions for that program within the existing building for a single year and then um, construct the new addition, remove all the remaining portables and, and free up the site area. But back to, um, back to homes, the, the infrastructure needs, uh, while not as high as, as homes, uh, as, as Hindley, um, in, in terms of overall dollar cost, um, they are no less um, urgent. And in, in talking with Mike, there, there are some urgent needs there that need to be addressed, including HVAC. So um, that's one of the reasons why Holmes moves up to, to number two um, in, this, um, in, in, in the order of, of proposed um, uh, priority. Um, we're saying high priority due to infrastructure needs of the building and the allocation size. Uh, of ancillary learning spaces. So I think that's part of what um, comes into play with, with, with homes here. So overall, including soft cost now, uh, roughly a 20 to 20, 20 to $22 million overall project. Again, eight, oh, eight, about eight and a half million of which um, is already slated for, um, uh, for, for improvements. I, I should clarify the, the this eight, roughly, you know, eight and a quarter to eight and three quarter million for, for infrastructure renovations. Uh, I would say two thirds of it is directly from the, the five year master plan. The other third is, is still from the KG&D um, report. 
uh, remaining items. So whether, so I don't know whether those are budgeted. I just don't want to mislead you by saying that all of it is already budgeted. But, um, but if, if so, if only the five-year capital plan is budgeted, then then you're you're already accounting for for five to five and a half million dollars for for homes here. Great, thank you. Questions, Mrs. Perry. Thank you. I just have a question: If the site drive and parking improvement costs, does that include? rejiggering the former Curtis property and paving that to include that in the parking? Correct, that's the, that's the proposal, is that to the north of, of Holmes, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the town property north of Holmes, I believe that would be looking at accessing the, um, uh, looking at the opportunities to, to put a, an additional, a drive to it and some additional parking. Uh, we know there are some challenges with stormwater um, and, and uh, and the, the low lying nature of, of that area of the site, but we would be looking at that very, very similar to what we talked about with, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong plan. <laughs> um, very similar to what we talked about with, um, with Hindley and the access to route one. Uh, it's, a, it's a cost line item and, and needs um, some study. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. I, I would just make sure that continues to be part of the discussion. You know, the land itself is challenging, but the town spent a lot of money to purchase it and demo the house. It really helped with the security issue in terms of that parking lot. But as we even look at just what we need in terms of parking or bus looping, let's just make sure we keep that piece of property front and center in the conversation. Yep. But thanks for bringing it up, Sarah. Other questions? I just have one, John. Um, you mentioned uh, that you could put a, a doorway into the corridor for the Library Media Center. Is I, I really like the idea that you have the flexible space at Henley with the instructional space. Mm -hmm. that, that's feasible here as well? Yes. Thank you. Is, okay. that, is that the, I guess, the storage or the gray areas on the gymnasium, does that really interfere with what you're trying to do with the Library Media Space or you're getting everything you, you want compared to the other schools, even with that little kind of intrusion from the gymnasium. Yeah, well, the part, part of that is the elevator, um, the right. elevator and the elevator machine room. So there's not, that, that, would, get, that, would, that would be challenging to relocate, um, but, but not impossible. Um, the, the overall, one of the things that we, we, uh, we were able to accomplish here was the overall square footage of the, what we're calling like the prototype. And then we implemented the prototype at Hindley and at Royal. Um, it just so happened to be through, through the study process, the square footages are almost the same. So after we remove the, pro, you know, the non-Library Media Center program from Holmes Library Media Center, we, we actually, um, we hit the square footage of the prototype almost exact so we really have the same amount of space at all three elementary school libraries associated with this plan. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I have one more question. At, at our previous point, you had mentioned the gymnasium uh, floor spills into the media center. I assume that's still the case and that would have to be renovated in this because I don't see any renovation on here, but maybe- my Correct, it, the, the intent is to, is to do that. Yes, that, that's factored okay. into the costs is that um, the existing stage floor would be removed and um, what well, well, we call it the stage floor, but it was a, almost like just a proscenium wood floor that runs into the gym. So that would be removed. The, um, we, would, we would fill and provide a slab on grade, at least for the media center area. Um, we could talk about whether we want to do that in the gym storage area. Um, but, but for the most part, I, I would suggest um, cutting it off at the media center, focusing on that. Um, and, and creating, and then the wall treatment. So, so the masonry wall would be um, uh, right down through the foundation would be, um, we'd have added acoustic barriers. Uh, so, so we solved both problems. We solved the transmission of sound transferring through the floor, and then we improve the wall. And, and those two in conjunction will, um, would result in a, um, in more, um, more adequate acoustical separation. And then what we've also done is we've looked at, you know, that um, we, we put some other spaces along that, that area, the office and the, 
the, the um, green screen area and the maker space are all along that wall anyway. So we, we move kind of the more dedicated quiet areas um, further away from, from that wall as well. Great, thank you. I should just point out on this diagram, it's a small thing, but um, the entrance of it perhaps does not show a, uh, call it a man trap, but, but it does have one, all the schools have one. Oh, the existing lobby. I mean, yes. Alan, you're talking about the, yeah, yeah, that's, um, I, this might be from an older plan and I know that yes, was an interior yeah. renovation we uh, more recent, so. So I would just ask, I think it's the case, but as, as we go through this and I know it's not, you know, that we incorporate any security upgrades or changes that we feel we need to do to the schools or are part of the plan, if not behind the scenes, you know, from a security standpoint. You know, they're, they're at least discussed through the process. Okay, we ready to move to Royal? Yes. Thank you. All right, so. Um, So Royal has has a little bit more going on with it. And um, one of the proposals that we had, uh, the three portable buildings are removed, the existing library, media center demolished, ELP now relocates to Oxridge. And, um, you know, there's still a number of, of portables in use and the library infrastructure um, is, is a, uh, at, the, at the school is, is, is challenging. But we do factor in Royal has lower enrollment and more common spaces than the other schools. It is the only school that has a dedicated um, cafeteria separate from auditorium, separate from gym. And its enrollment is, is in general um, about 50 students fewer than the other schools. But the design concept here also looks at what's called classrooms eight through 11. Um, those are the, on the north side of the building and you'll see where we're proposing to build this new addition would be in place of that four classroom, um, which I believe was built in the, in the 60s or 70s, um, is, is, uh, is not in as good shape as, um, as the rest of the classrooms in the buildings. One of them is undersized. So we, we looked at that as, as, a, as one of the drivers here. Besides removing portables, we'd be demolishing those, those, that four classroom uh, area and the library media center. So new library media center in the addition. General music storage and music rooms are part of the addition. There are four new classrooms in the addition. Renovations to the first floor include expanded classrooms, um, world language, idea, other spaces, including special ed, uh, SRBI, speech and psychology, staff workroom. Uh, reconfiguration of the ELP classrooms. You'll see that's morphed a little bit. We moved art over into one of those. Uh, infrastructure improvements, uh, again, at Royal here, um, we, we have a fair amount of work and um, site drive and parking improvements. Neither on this, Royal doesn't have the extent to which uh, Holmes or Hindley have some potential site revisions, but, um, but there's still uh, line item costs associated with site drive and parking improvements. So the plan for Royal looks like, looks like this, I will now uh, minimize. So again, the, the addition is, is slated for the area that currently includes the four classroom addition and some of the portables. So, so Royal will need some, some temporary uh, um, modification. It'll, it'll presumably need um, some portables. Maybe, maybe we relocate the portables for the year that we're doing the work here at Royal. Um, we would, um, you know, you could, you could do a, a hybrid. You could do some of your current portables and move them here. That's one of the other reasons why it might be good to have them have Royal go last because you can take, um, you know, if you, if you, or if you just want to lease portables for a year uh, might be the better option given conditions. But that's that's part of the the royal plan, um, and why royal does have a higher degree of soft costs associated with temporary phasing and provisions. But overall, the new addition looks like um, library media center. Um, we do replace some toilet rooms, so we we um, we look at at um, at making sure we we have those in in this addition. Four classrooms, music, instrumental music, um, in, in this arrangement. Um, and then gym and auditorium remain as is. And then the ELP program 
is being relocated. Uh, we have shuffled some things around here. So we have OTPT, SRBI, the IDEA room, and then we move art back to where the kiln is. Uh, we, we expand um, that first floor space significantly so that we have um, the, the, the ed spec required amount of space for an art room, art storage and kiln. Um, special education on the opposite side of the corridor. And then, uh, so that moves, so that creates a general classroom uh, where art used to be. And then the second floor, we, we open up and expand. We, we create um, four larger classrooms where there were previously four with space in the middle. Um, we expand the, um, or, or yes, we, we have classrooms on each end and then we have world languages. So here um, we do total up to 22 classrooms, which includes the four at the new addition. And we provide all of the, um, all, all of the support spaces required. And uh, again, similar to Henley by demolishing the library and media center, we kind of restore the, the old um, now Eastern face of Royal. I apologize, Royal now has North up uh, on these plans. So you'll see a couple of things. For example, the, um, the, the, the overall result and size of Royal isn't that much larger than it is now, but it is significantly improved in terms of infrastructure, in terms of size and allocation of spaces. Um, and uh, with, the, with the largest um, new addition, it is, it is all on one story because the second story at Royal ends before you get to the gym and the auditorium. Um, and then one, one key element to Royal is the removal of that staircase um, in, in order to try to create a much more universal design, much more uh, accessible building. The removal of the staircase and the lift allows for um, this, this sequence of ramps to, to allow access to the gym and the auditorium and, and access into the, um, into the uh, new addition. Uh, any That's questions right. then on Royal? Question, Mr. C. <clears throat> From a logistics standpoint or site plan, um, you talk about maybe some of the challenges at Royal relative to the to be the north side of the school and I mean, in, in, in the access, you know, from, I guess, what is it, Royal Road? Sure. Um, so as it, yeah, as it stands now, the, the um, Royal does split the site, the building kind of splits the site, whereas Hindley more or less has a front yard and all the fields on one side um, and, and homes kind of similar, has a, has a front yard and a front parking lot and, and then all the fields and play area to the back. Uh, Holmes, uh, Royal has, uh, is, is more or less um, split. You have a lot of paved play area and playgrounds wrapping the building. And one of the keys to this, one of the keys to phasing here is, um, is that there will be temporary, um, tempor temporarily for construction some areas we'll have to pick whether we want to go with the west side of the building or the east side of the building. It's, it's most likely we would go with access on the east side of the building and still keep your fields, but, but, but require access to the fields by looping all the way around to the north. Um, a goal of this is to try to mitigate that by, by taking out that four classroom addition and then taking out the portables. You actually free up more space to the north of the building. I know it's hard to see on this plan, but the portables um, uh, are, are located um, right underneath where we show the new addition uh, and continue on to the north of Fairmount. So, so that will, you know, similar to, um, it, it, would, it, would, it would replace some of the four square areas and, and some of the play areas that are now just east of that, and it would move those to the north of the building. So you'd have more play area, paid play area, and more access to the playscape around the north side of the building from the other parts uh, of the site. Um, so I think that in the long run, that's a benefit to the site. But as far as, it, you know, if, you're, if your question does pertain to construction access and, and the phasing of this, then, then yes, we would, we would generally um, 
need to come up with a way to access this construction site uh, safely from, uh, from, from, from Royal Road and, and allow for um, access to and from that. Uh, but, but my sense here is that we keep the west side un, um, uh, pr pretty much un, unscathed more or less during the construction phasing. Does that, does that answer your question? I guess. Yes, thank you. Okay. Other questions? No? I would, I would say just as you think through to some of your points, Dave, you know, this seems like a bigger project all the way around, but it seems to make a lot of sense. But actually from the phase standpoint, Mike Lynch jump in here, uh, this might align well with Ox Ridge coming online. And I think we did the right thing in how we built and designed Ox Ridge. And there's potentially swing space there if you look at the enrollment. So that's, you know, kind of plays into some of the thought process that has to go in how we, how we figure out how this rolls out. Um, because they're, they're almost, you know, sister schools right up the road from each other. So, you know, those are all things that I think we'll have to take into account. And I think to your point, John, it opens up, you know, taking down this uh, addition here opens up and I think you haven't talked about it specifically but I think it would be important to make sure we incorporate whatever conversation we need around play space and outdoor space while we're while we're you know tearing up and working on all these properties I, I see opportunities to maybe create some of the right outdoor spaces for folks um, so I think it's just something that and some of that gets flushed out during the design phase also and then John or Mike, if you could, could you talk to, our portables aren't really portable. I mean, we consider them portable, but <laughs> we're not gonna be moving around the existing portables to utilize for temporary classroom space, I'm assuming. Uh, well, the ones we have now are probably too old to be moved, but there, there is one at Royal, one at Hindley, and one at, um, Royal Hindley and Oxbridge that were moved from the high school when the new high school was built because they were fairly new at that time. Your newest portables now are 13. We've had them 13 years and we got them off of someone else's lease. So they're 16, <laughs> so they're 16 years old. Those are the ones that draw at the homes. But if you take the skirting off, they still have the axles and the tires and the wheels are under there. So they could come apart and be moved a short distance, like if you had to move them from one side of the home's parking lot around to the other. Okay. But when they leave the site, they'll leave in a dumpster. Okay. <laughs> John, it's a, it's a good point in that. When we had a portable discussion as part of the Ox Ridge process, and, and the, the, the challenging thing right now is there is limited availability or no availability. Oh, I can't know, imagine. With people looking for space. So it's something as this process moves, you should get a handle on it sooner than later. I wouldn't necessarily recommend moving any of our portables and looking to use more modern portables if needed from and an educational space. I, I just want to make an observation. I did some back of the envelope math, which is dangerous, but on top of Alan's statement that no new building. So if you just add up these estimates, you're talking about a $75 million project, but there's a big but in there in that uh, about 26-ish was maintenance that we were planning for. So net net, you're looking at a less than a fifty million dollar project amongst three buildings, and you get so much more utility out of these things. You get rid of this uh, security and safety issue of the portables. I mean, again, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but it, yeah, I just no, wanted to point those yourself. out. Get ahead of yourself. Get ahead of excited. So the, the only other thing I would throw on, and John, I don't, you know, you you and your expertise in your your previous life is, I know we've looked ten years out and we've looked at the enrollment numbers. Some of these schools fall within the commercial corridor of, of proposed zoning changes and stuff like that. But do we feel comfortable that we built in kind of the capacity and kind of uh, kind of what we may need in the future as, as we look at these plans? I mean, there's you know there's going to be more um, you know building coming online, which I think we built into our enrollments. I know the the legislation is proposed, but it would change the amount of building in and around train stations and stuff like that. But if we look at our 10 year enrollment, we're building in the capacity we feel we need. It, it, I guess I'll just also respond to that. The, yeah. town, the town has regulations that were recently put in place 
that allow a lot of flexibility on the town owned board of education web uh, I'm sorry, web page. Uh, <laughs> town owned board of education sites. So I think you're enjoying that with the Ox Ridge kind of building where you, you kind of relax some of the setbacks and stuff. So um, you can utilize those. I, mean, I can't talk to the, what's coming down at the state level, but at least from a site, there's a lot more flexibility on these sites than a traditional commercial site or a residential site. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're good. Um, I think our next step is, um, are we comfortable? Do we, do, does the committee want to have another meeting or are we happy to bring this to the board at our next time? And bring it to the board. Bring it to the board. Bring it to the board. Uh, to the board. I personally agree. And Absolutely. I'll leave that up to Mr. Deneen to place it on the agenda. And uh, I think we're, we're set. Any, any further questions? No. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, I'd open it up to public comment. Good morning. If you would like to make public comment, please use the raise hand option. Once called, you will have up to three minutes to comment. There are no raised hands at this time. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Sini. All in favor? Thank you.